personify winning. And he did whatever it would take within the rules to win. He's shown all of us, you know, college coaches, high school coaches, the meaning of commitment. As players changed, you know, Morgan was able to coach whatever the situation was. Through the years, I've been surrounded by some of the greatest young student athletes. And every kid who's played for him has had, had a scholarship. In my opinion, there's no better basketball coach anywhere at any level than Morgan Wooten. For almost a half a century, this gymnasium has been home for Morgan Wooten. On this court on the campus of DeMatha High School in Hyattsville, Maryland, is where an energetic coach with an intense drive for perfection and a nonstop work ethic became a coaching legend. His plan was pretty simple, work hard, work smart, and have fun. With this formula, success would be guaranteed. These banners around the gymnasium reinforce that statement. In his 47 years as the head basketball coach of this all boys Catholic high school, his coaching resume reads, 33 conference championships, five national championships, and more than 1,200 coaching victories. But this man's legacy will be defined as more than that of a basketball coach. Morgan has always stated his greatest accomplishment is that of a teacher. His enjoyment has come from touching the lives of thousands of young men he's come in contact with during his career here at DeMatha, something I witnessed firsthand as one of his former students and players. Please join me as we chronicle the life of Morgan Wooten, teacher, coach, survivor, legend. An award like this, uh, you know, this coming Friday, being inducted to the Hall of Fame in Springfield, I'll be there representing all of you. It's a fabulous award, obviously, but I accept it on behalf of the entire DeMatha family. There's a little poem called God's Hall of Fame. And it goes like this, it says, this crowd on earth, how soon they forget the heroes of the past. They cheer like mad until you fall and that's how long you last. But God, he never does forget. And in his Hall of Fame, just by believing in his son, inscribed, you'll find your name. And so, you know what? If we believe in the Son of God, one day we'll all be in that Hall of Fame. I thank all of you for being here this morning. I thank the Trinitarians for giving me the chance to be a coach and be a teacher. It's been my greatest honor. This is a day that I will remember a long time. It has moved me deeply. God bless all of you. Thank you very much. On the eve of his induction into the Basketball Hall of Fame in front of a full school assembly, Morgan Wooten had the chance to look back as well as say thanks to the institution that launched his teaching and coaching career. Morgan was born April 21st, 1931 in Durham, North Carolina to Charles and Claire Wooten. At the age of four, the family moved to Hyattsville, Maryland near the monastery of the Trinitarian Brothers. In the years to come, the monastery would become DeMatha High School. We lived only uh, two and a half blocks from DeMatha. And that was to become quite important in our childhood as time passed. When I was uh, about four and that Morgan was about nine, I think the DeMatha brothers came to the place which is now DeMatha High School. And they started a uh, group for young boys, I remember, because I was very annoyed because I couldn't belong to it. It was the Knights of something, the Knights of St. John DeMatha or some kind of, of uh, Group. And Morgan was a, a member of that and he went over there and went to Mass and he started going very early on as soon as the brothers arrived at DeMatha. After graduating from Blair High School, Morgan attended Montgomery Community College where he focused on a law degree. While in school though, a sports opportunity presented itself. My uncle, who a uh, longtime worker with the uh, Police Boys Club in Washington DC, John Early, called me and he said, the orphanage needs a baseball coach this spring. St. Joe's Orphanage, and uh, he says, can you get me somebody? And I had a good buddy named Tommy Clark, and I said, yeah, Tommy's a good baseball man. Let me see if I can get Tommy to do it. So I got Tommy. He said, he, well, I will go over and we'll talk to him. So we drove over to St. Joe's home and met with the uh, sister superior, and we sat there, and she started describing what the job required, you know, practice uh, seven days a week to keep the kids busy because they were uh, 
you know, they didn't have any home to, to go to. They lived right there. And actually, uh, proctoring the study hall at night to make sure they were doing well in their grades and help them. And as the conversation went along, Tommy gradually started saying, well, you know, Morgan's a candidate for this job too, sister. He's very interested in it. Of course, Tommy later went on to be a very successful salesman. And the next thing I know, he'd shifted the whole thing towards me. And she turned around and said, well, that's wonderful. She said, I'm going to offer you the job. She said, be here Monday at 3 o'clock. It was the spark in life that Morgan needed. He became football and baseball coach for the orphanage. He had an immediate impact on the youngsters. Morgan turned the group into champions and instilled in them four principles to live by. God, family, school, and sports. God should be number one in your life if you really want to do well. And he'll sustain you and he'll help you. And you guys have been through tough times, but you, you can really rise above it. And um, I said, right now your family is St. Joe's right here at home. We're, we are family. That's the way we preached it. And I said, we got to really hit the books. And everything else comes after that. And I think it really started there. Continuing his own education, Morgan enrolled at the University of Maryland and changed his major to history. History was always my favorite subject. Uh, Sister Joseph of the Divine Heart, years ago when I was in grade school at St. Michael's, had given me a huge set of history books. Of I, maybe she was about to throw them out, but she said, Yo, you take these. And I started reading them. And I just fell in love with history. When we were little, we would all play history together like other children play blocks. And so Angus would be, uh, would be George Washington, and they would, he would do the whole farewell address, and they knew it by heart. And then Morgan would be Abraham Lincoln, and he would do the entire Gettysburg Address, which wasn't that long. And I always had to be Admiral Farragut. And the only thing anyone ever knew that Admiral Farragut said was, damn the torpedoes full, full speed ahead. And so then I would be left, and then we'd start all over again, and they would make these long speeches. <laughs> I was fortunate to have great instructors at Maryland, and they helped to kindle that fire inside of me and to make me love history even more and more. And um, I've used history a lot in my coaching. While taking a full course load at Maryland, Morgan still coached at the orphanage. His approach to the game and his work with youngsters caught the attention of area high school coaches. I saw Morgan as a uh, coach that knew exactly what he was doing and had the respect of the young kids that he was coaching. He was coaching at St. Joseph's Orphanage, and that wasn't an easy job. And when I uh, went over to see them play uh, in the CYO League, uh, they were head and shoulders above other teams because they were so well coached. We really had some outstanding athletes, and Joe was interested in a couple of them. And he came over and he watched a couple of, the, of our football games, because I ended up coaching football too. I fell in love with kids. and. Uh, he came over and saw our football team play, and we were very good. We never lost a game in two years. I was new in my profession, and I said, well, uh, you need a good assistant. And so I brought Morgan over as a JV coach, and uh, I knew after watching him that I wasn't going to be able to hold him long because uh, he was really very good. And uh, he wanted to leave after the second year, for DeMatha, but I told him I didn't think he was ready. He ought to stay another year, at least. And he did, and fortunately, the DeMatha job opened, and they asked me about him, and I recommended him, and it's been uh, history ever since. DeMatha High and Morgan Wooten were reunited. Wooten did everything for this all-boys school. He taught history, coached the football and basketball teams, and even helped with bingo on Friday nights. I was impressed about his enthusiasm, his knowledge, his presence, and I thought primarily that's what we wanted, was a, a teacher with a lot of enthusiasm, as I knew that his teaching ability would transfer over into his coaching. With his duties growing, Morgan gave up football and focused on building his basketball program. I just thought we could build a good solid program that we could do well. And there's some things I thought we could do maybe better than most because I felt we could outwork most of our competition, that we could be in better shape, that we could be more enthusiastic than maybe many of our, the people we had to play. And there were certain things that can elevate you if you'll just concentrate on them, and, and we tried to do that. Hey, Red. How you doing, buddy? He personified winning. See, he was focused on winning. No matter what was involved, he wanted to win. And he did whatever it would take within the rules to win. 
uh, he's, a, he's a rare guy as far as I'm concerned because he's a guy who's a gentleman and yet he's always in control of any situation. The date was January 30th, 1965. The place, Cold Field House on the campus of the University of Maryland. On a snowy, icy Saturday evening, over 12,000 energetic fans packed the arena to witness high school basketball history. Well, I think the power game was maybe one of the most important high school basketball games ever played, simply because it put high school basketball on the map in terms of being a national sport, in other words, attract national attention. Power versus DeMatha. Sports historians would call this matchup the greatest high school basketball game ever played. The contest had all the pregame hype of a heavyweight prize fight. Hordes of local and national media descended on the College Park campus. It was the hottest ticket in town. For the first time in any game I ever heard of, Time Magazine was there, Newsweek was there. It was almost being treated like a big college game. Uh, so for just high school basketball in general, it kind of opened up to the whole world. Hey, there's great kids in high school, great players. The Power Memorial Squad was a formidable opponent in name and stature. The New York City team had an impressive 71 game win streak and the most dominant player in the country in seven foot one inch Lou Alcindor. We know him today as Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Many question how DeMatha could match the mighty Goliath. What do I do so my kids will not be intimidated by Kareem? Lou Alcindor at the time. I mean, he was at least a seven foot three, and <laughs> that was the biggest player anyone had ever heard of. And I just didn't want our guys to wilt, change their shots, get a couple of them blocked, and think the world had ended and the game would be over. Anybody that came up against us seven feet tall, they had to have some talent. They had to play. And that was the only player that we met that year that was unbelievable. I mean, his abilities were just uh, fantastic. The Stags were looking to avenge a 65-62 loss to power the previous year. For DeMatha to win this game, they had to neutralize Al Sindor. A real good idea one of our coaches came up with was, let's use a tennis racket. I'm thinking about getting a ladder out there and getting a guy on a ladder and maybe make him shoot over this guy. Well, he says, no, he says, you need more mobility. He said, why don't you use my tennis racket? And that way, gets Big Sid to use it. And so it was an excellent suggestion, because now we had the idea of great size, but it was mobile with the tennis racket. The tennis racket experiment worked for the smaller stags. DeMatha minimized the inside play of Alcindor and shocked the basketball world with a 46-43 victory. After I had a moment to sit down, I said, wow. What an experience this was. We brought this team down from New York. We exposed our kids and the kids in the metropolitan area to some great, great basketball. After the game, Al Cinder and the rest of his teammates came into our locker room and congratulated us. Man, it was the greatest feeling at that moment. You just remember back to that time and say that this is a, a very super feeling for high school kids. Every kid that played in that game went on to play Division I basketball somewhere. Of course, Kareem went to UCLA, but Bob Whitmore went on to be the first black captain at Notre Dame. Bernie Williams went to LaSalle and, and on and on. And uh, I just think it really put high school basketball on a pedestal where people said, boy, hey, these guys are good. DeMatha had proven it now belonged in the same category with the nation's elite teams, putting the school's program and Hyattsville on the sports map. It was great for DeMatha because it put us on the map. We'd had excellent championship teams in the early 60s right before that with John Austin, Johnny Jones, and those guys. And we'd even given the great Carroll teams with Hoover and Thompson a run for their money right in the late 50s. But this really put us on the map as a real solid high school program. And um, so in every way, not just for DeMatha and for Washington, but for high school basketball, that was a big game. Now everyone knew of DeMatha and its young, energetic coach, Morgan Wooten. 